We all know the drill. Sound needs air. No air, no sound. That's why the moon's concert scene is, well, non-existent. In a vacuum, it would be silent. But how can these IEMs bend the laws of physics? Please leave a like and let's get to it. Even the best sounding IEMs are worthless if they feel like torture devices in your ears. Thankfully, KBeer has put a lot of thought into the KBO2's design and ergonomics. The shell is crafted from lightweight yet robust resin. I won't call it a bold material choice, as almost all serious IEMs are made from resin. It just works. You get a decent sense of solidity. I've tried some in-ear monitors that felt premium, but not tough or robust. I was so afraid to throw them in a backpack that often I didn't use them at all. What's the point of having something well made if you're not going to take advantage of it? There are no visible gaps or rough edges, which contributes to a smoother, more comfortable fit. The nozzle is angled slightly, which is an important choice. This allows the KBO2 to sit naturally in the ear canal, minimizing pressure points and creating a more secure fit. It provides a good grip for the ear tips, preventing them from slipping off. Getting a piece of rubber stuck in your ear canal is a scary thing to happen. Speaking of ear tips, KBeer includes a selection of silicone tips in various sizes. You get three types. The white ones, the black ones and the grey ones. The included tips are of a decent quality, soft and pliable. But nowadays a company would really have to try to mess it up. Now the comfort. I had to give my ears some time to adjust, around a week of regular use. After that period, once inserted, KBO2s practically disappear. I've worn this for hours on end, and I have experienced only minimal discomfort at times. There is no sense of pressure or fatigue, which is a huge plus for long listening sessions. They are also relatively small and do not protrude stupidly far from your ear. What's even more important is that the nozzle isn't too thick, which often is a concern with some unique or multi-driver IEMs. There is just one quite bizarre thing about the build. Something inside of the shell is resonating. It's not something you could notice during regular use, but when you tap on them, it sounds like a resonating spring for a little bit. You can even feel those vibrations. I am pretty sure it has to do something with the bone conduction driver. Moving on to the cable, it's fairly generic. It uses a detachable design with standard two-pin connectors. You can easily replace the cable if it gets damaged or if you want to try something nicer. Keep Hi-Fi offers a variety of earphone cables that are much nicer than the stock one. The included cable is braided which helps to minimize tangling. It's also relatively lightweight and flexible, but don't expect any miracles. Visually, the KBO2 is available in three distinct colorways. Maple Brown, Misty Blue and Crystal Violet. All of the finishes are done exceptionally well, with a lot of detail on the faceplate and some extra sparkle. It looks amazing, expensive and refined making them a stylish addition to your collection. This isn't just your average IEM, it's a hybrid design with some interesting tech under the hood. At the heart of the KBO2 is a dual driver setup. We are talking about a 10mm beryllium plated dynamic driver paired with a 10mm elastic piece type BC driver. BC stands for bone conduction. In traditional IEMs, sound is delivered through air vibrations that reach your eardrums. Bone conduction takes a different approach. These drivers vibrate, and that vibration is transmitted directly through the bones of your skull, bypassing the eardrum. KBR has specifically tuned it for low and extremely low frequency compensation. That means they focus on boosting the sub-bass and bass regions to provide a more impactful and immersive listening experience. The primary dynamic driver utilizes a beryllium-plated diaphragm. Beryllium is known for its exceptional rigidity and lightweight properties. This translates to faster transient response, improved detail retrieval and reduced distortion. 
especially in higher frequencies. Sensitivity is a measure of how loud IEMs will get with a given amount of power. Here, at 108 decibels per milliwatt, it means that for every milliwatt of power supplied, the KBO2 will produce 108 decibels of sound. It indicates that they can be driven effectively by most smartphones and portable audio players. The frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz is the range of frequencies the IMs are capable of reproducing. This range is generally considered the standard range of human hearing. So the KBO2 covers the full spectrum of audible sound. However, it's important to note that the frequency response alone doesn't tell the whole story. How well those frequencies are reproduced is just as important. In essence, these numbers, when combined with the design and materials, paint a picture of a well-engineered IEM. Tonality is where we'll start. The KBO2 presents a profile that, while aiming for a consumer-friendly warmth, can be quite pleasing. It leans toward a warm, slightly V-shaped sound. This is achieved through a noticeable emphasis in the bass and a gentle lift in the treble. However, the execution of this tuning is where the nuances lie. The bass asserts itself. It's not just present, it's dominant. The low end is undeniably boosted, delivering a substantial thump that's satisfying for modern genres like EDMs and hip-hop. The bass, while powerful, lacks some finesse that I would expect from a more refined or more expensive IMs. There is a noticeable bloom that results in a degree of bleed into the lower mid-range. This can create a slightly congested feel, but for me, that wasn't a problem, and I'm not even a bass head. The mid-range is where the V-shape becomes most apparent. It's definitely recessed compared to the bass and treble, making vocals and instruments sounding slightly distant. However, it's not completely scooped out. There is still a decent amount of detail present, but it requires a bit more focus to pick up. The warmth from the bass does carry over to the lower mids, giving them a slightly thicker, richer sound. The treble, while elevated, is generally smooth and avoids harshness or sibilance. This is a crucial point, as boosted treble can easily become fatiguing. The KBO2 manages to strike a balance, offering a sense of excitement and detail without being overly aggressive. It excels in genres like electronic music, hip-hop, pop and rock. It provides the necessary bass punch and treble sparkle to make these genres come alive. Now let's focus on technicalities. The KB or KBO2 presents a soundstage that's best described as average. It's not overly expensive, nor is it claustrophobic. You get a sense of space, but it's more intimate than grand. The width is decent, allowing for some lateral separation of instruments. However, the depth is more limited. That means that while you can perceive instruments positioned to the left and right, the sense of front-to-back layering is less pronounced. Nevertheless, for an IEM of this price, it's a strong performer. The imaging precision is adequate for its price range. You can generally pinpoint the location of instruments and vocals within the soundstage, but it isn't quite razor sharp. The separation of instruments is decent, preventing them from sounding overly congested. In terms of dynamics, the KBO2 delivers a punchy and engaging performance. The contrasts between the quiet and loud passages are handled well. The bass, in particular, contributes to a sense of impactfulness, providing a satisfying thump and a rumble. However, the microdynamics, the subtle nuances and variations in volume are less pronounced. This IEM offers a respectable technical performance for its price point. While it may not excel in any single area, it provides a balanced and enjoyable listening experience. All this makes it a fun and engaging IEM for a variety of genres. The KB or KBO2 aims to be fun, engaging and energetic. It's not trying to be a reference-grade monitor, 
but it offers a listening experience that is satisfying, especially for its price. The warm, V-shaped sound signature, combined with the punchy dynamics and decent imaging, make it a great choice. For around $40, it's a great option for everybody who wants some fun and a lot of bass on a budget.